Good morning. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will, and I'm down here at the Yankee Caps. If you don't know, here in Key West, it's uh, one of the head boats that goes out to uh, Pulley Ridge, and they just do unbelievable fishing. It's like a three-day um, trip out, or sometimes four days. But uh, they come back, and I've done it before. I run down here. I watch for when... Uh, they're coming back and I'll grab some of the heads and collars. Now, I got something kind of special. I was going through some stuff in my house in New York and I found my grandmother's recipe for pierogi dough. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna collect some heads, we're gonna pull the meat off them, and we're gonna make fish pierogies. I'll, I'll explain it to now I'm watching people on watch them on YouTube. I'm gonna steam it, pick the meat out, and what then uh, and make mix it. Yeah, mix it with potato. 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 Yeah. It's your own personal recipe. Actually, my grandmother's dough recipe. Oh, is it? Yeah. And then it's good. It's pretty cool. Just boil the whole thing. Steam it. Steam it. Yeah. All right, so all we're going to use is the uh, collars and the head. I don't actually have use for the rack. I'm going to separate the collar so that it's easier to, uh, to steam. So I did that not facing you. Sorry about that. But there's a little hinge right here. And you just get underneath that, cut up towards the top. And then there's one right there and that's it the collar on that side separated and now we'll do the same thing on this side but first you got to go down the membrane here where the uh where the gills are all right and then that little hinge you can see it some fish it's very prominent other ones you got to kind of not search for it, but it's not as uh, pronounced as it is on this fish here. And that should just come off, yep. Yeah. Just like that. Make our lives easy here. And there we go. We got our collar. This way it'll fit into the uh, into the steamer a little bit easier if they're separated. I can put them one on top of the other like that. But that's it, and I'm gonna pull these gills and everything else out. It'll just make for a little bit cleaner meat. And then the other thing that I wanna do here is uh, take out these staples, because we don't need that in our, in our pierogies. So the numbers, basically when you go on the, uh, on the boat, they give you a number and then any fish you catch they staple the number to the fish and then when you get back that's how they uh, auction them off to get the right fish back to the right person They need pliers to get the rest of those out but yeah we're just gonna pull those out so that they're not in our in our pierogies So just to show you the, uh, the recipe in question, so what's funny is that that is actually my mother's handwriting. So she transcribed a bunch of my grandmother's recipes. So this is the pierogi dough and then she has a bunch of different uh, fillings there. And then she's got a recipe here for sauerkraut, kasha cheese, yeah. So pretty cool. We're gonna follow this. Uh, we're gonna follow this dough recipe. See how it comes out. Seems simple enough. And uh, now we're gonna steam those heads. We 
we're gonna let this completely cool down and then pick it but that is perfect that was about a little over 10 minutes maybe about under 15 somewhere right in between while our fish is cooling we're gonna prep the uh, potatoes for our filling so we're gonna boil these then mash them very very simple and then mix the uh, fish into that so I'm gonna peel all these and then get them into a pot of water So on the red snappers, there's not a crazy amount of meat in the head, but also look at the size of that cheek. That's a lot of meat. This piece under the eye, that can have a little bit of a, a fishy taste to it. And also this piece that's in the jawline, that can have a little bit of a fishy taste, but we're going to use it all. And then at the top of the head, I know it's kind of kind of hard to tell what this is now that it's been cooked, but there's the eye. This is the top of the head and down the top here. You just go like that. Boom. Take out a big old piece of meat there. Same thing on the other side. So just to give you an idea, that's just the head meat. And we've already got a full bowl there. Where is my other cheek? There it is. All that. And then we haven't even gotten to the collar yet. Wait until you see how much, as I always point out, how much comes off of this. And now they're not allowed to uh, throw the racks and everything. They can throw the skin in the water, but they can't throw the racks in. So the racks actually go to the dumpster. So that's where this uh, snapper head was headed. No, it might be a little hard to tell, but this is the other side of that collar. So again, this big old hunk of meat there. And I let this go for 15 minutes. You could do even less too, because we're putting them in the pierogies and then those are going to be heated up as well. So you don't want this meat to overcook. And I found on something like a mutton or a snapper like this, the meat is, uh, you can actually bring it a little fur farther, uh, or I'm sorry, not as far as you would bring like a grouper collar. This meat can dry out just a little bit on you. All right, I'm not gonna go crazy in there, but that's pretty much everything. There we go. Nice big bowl of beautiful red snapper meat. Okay, our potatoes are done, strained them. But now, with the pan still hot, we're gonna add a little bit of half and half, just a splash, and a little bit of Kerrygold butter. Now add our potatoes back to that, and we're gonna mash them with salt. That's garlic salt and pepper. And these don't have to be like whipped and airy. We're just trying to get them nice and mashed. And once this cools down, we'll add our uh, fish to them. But I don't want to add the fish now because it will overcook our fish. And that is it okay so my potatoes are cooled down fish is cooled down incorporate the two now i'm going to add a little bit of mayo it might seem like overkill but what it's going to do is ensure that that 
collar meat and head meat does not dry out when we cook the pierogies themselves. Definitely could have used a larger bowl. But you get the idea, we're just mixing this all together. And really the main ingredient is going to be the fish rather than the potatoes. And then we're going to put this in the fridge and let it cool down completely and make our dough. All right, to make our, our dough, and I'm following, following the instructions here. Um, there is one part that's cut off, of course, but I looked at a couple other recipes and I put together what I believe it is. So hopefully, hopefully I'm right. So we have two cups of flour here and then two teaspoons of salt. And we are going to mix that together. Now we'll make a little bit of a, a well in the middle and I have here one egg. Oop. Good thing we need that beaten. We're going to add our egg to the middle and then we have one tablespoon. Is that right? Yep. One tablespoon oil. Add that to the mix. Half a cup water, which I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time and start incorporating our, our flour here. And once everything, there's uh, no dry bits left, we'll take this out and knead it by hand. Okay, flour the surface, flour our hands. All right, so I'm gonna knead this for about five to eight minutes until it really starts coming together. But it feels Feels good so far. And then we're gonna let it rest and knead it again. But it's got a nice pull to it, you see that? The bounce back, that means it's gonna have a really nice chew to it when we go to roll out our pierogies. All right, I'm gonna let this sit covered for about 10 minutes and we'll knead it again. Actually gonna work with half of our dough at a time. Good pullback there. I don't know what the correct term would be for that, but all right. So what we're gonna do is roll it out completely and then cut our circles out of it instead of rolling each of the circles individually like I did with the uh, the dumplings. See, now this is more like a pasta dough to me to where it keeps shrinking like that. And you just gotta keep working it. I wanna make sure it doesn't stick. All right, let's see if this works. Oh! <laughs> Perfect circle. Okay. There we go. And then this little bit that's left will bunch up again and roll out again. I'm pretty excited about that. Looks good. All right, now these are gonna roll out just a little bit more. Make them nice and thin. There we 
we go. And then I'll show you one. But all we're doing, grab our pierogi filling. Pinch, pinch, pinch. There you go. So I'm going to do that about 20 times. I'm definitely not moving too fast on these, but we're getting them done. I mean, it's a slow process, but that's okay. That's why you make a ton of them. And you can freeze these as well, so that... But they do look pretty. That's a perfect pierogi. So I ran out of filling. And what do we got here? Two, four, six, eight, 12, 24, 26 pierogies. I had enough to make a couple more with the pasta, but I ran out of the uh, filling. But hey, 26 isn't bad. So I'm going to cover these with a film and put them in the fridge until we're ready to cook them later tonight. All right, so to accompany our pierogies, what you need is caramelized onions. This is hard to do with only one hand here. So we're gonna cook these down when they're nice and brown. We'll add a little bit of butter, which I have here. And in a moment, we'll start sauteing our pierogies. All right, we're gonna add a very healthy amount of butter right into the middle of that. And those are about done. So now we're gonna cook off our pierogies in the skillet. So there's a few different ways that you could cook pierogies. You can, one, you could boil them, you can steam them. I'm gonna do them very similar to how I did the Chinese dumplings on the channel so I'm gonna pan sear them on each side and then at the last minute add a little bit of water and throw the lid on just to make sure that uh, we're all the way cooked through and hot in the middle so don't be alarmed but I am gonna put a substantial amount of oil in there and then we are going to cook them on each side don't want to overcrowd. We want enough room so I can flip them over. So for this round, that's about it. All right, we'll give each of these a flip to the other side. Ooh. Golden brown. These look absolutely perfect. Making grandma proud. All right, so now that those have had a minute on that side, we're gonna add just a little bit of water to steam them and cover them up. On top of these, oh, we'll put our caramelized onions. You ready? How do you eat them? What do you mean? So we got a little bit of sour cream. You gotta have sour cream. No, I need sauce. Yep, yep. Here, I even got your. Your fork, the fork, a fork. This is Colin, everyone. Hey, so everyone. here's the thing. One of my best good friends. <laughs> Colin, Colin's the dark horse in this race because he's Polish and his grandmother used to make pierogies. So I didn't know that. I know the real deal here. Are you wow. going to kick him out of the house now? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> <Hello>, Colin. <laughs> All right. Oh, there's my fork. Okay, onions on there. It's hot. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, they are hot. They're going to be hot. <laughs> so, this is a Good Polish burn. dish? It is Polish, yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm going in. I'm just you guys gonna. Spin your lava mouths. I don't understand how you do it. It's not lava. It says the girl that eats lava all the time. Mm, okay. I'm perfect. So. Let me go dry. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, they're not your grandmother's pierogies. They're my grandmother's pierogi. <laughs> oh yeah, better. this is your grandmother's um, <laughs> dough recipe, wow. right? Yes. Love that. Is there mashed potatoes in here? There's yeah, so it's mashed potatoes and then steamed American red snapper. And I'm saying a rare American red snapper because last time 
I said American Red Snapper, people went off the rails that is just called Red Snapper. So a rare American Red Snapper. <laughs> <laughs> it's a I want to know part of this. Also. Uh, these are really good. Yeah, they are. All right. And Madeline, you're right. They are not lava. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron's just a wuss. But the dough. Let's concentrate on the dough. I'll concentrate on this dough. Oh, well. The dough is pretty good. Grandma Sophie knew what she was doing. Even though part of the recipe was cut off and I had to make it up. Wow. <laughs> ah, hot, isn't it? <laughs> Did you I'm get sorry, it yourself? It is lava. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for the home team. The caramelized onions are key, man. Those are yes. amazing. Those are so good. Mm hmm. All right. So. Okay. <laughs> We had a place in New York City that was open 24 hours called Veselka. And it was at your drunkest and your worst at 3 o'clock in the morning. You would go there and get <laughs> pierogies. And that's what I was trying to recreate. And I think I've done a good job. But uh, And then again, those all those racks and heads were going into the trash. That was going to be thrown out. So we turned it into a meal for a few people here. And... Hold on, let me... Let me put this down while I'm talking. And also, I just want to show you right here that I am freezing the rest so that we can enjoy them another day. So, all right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for coming along, and I will see you on the next one. What was that? They're delicious. <laughs>